Alright, hello and welcome to Ben's OP Game Show, recorded live at 3 p.m. Pacific Time every Friday, right here. Twitch.tv slash The Game Fanatics. On this week's show, going to be talking about the early access game Dead Cells and a late review of The Last Guardian, which is very interesting. And I'm quite polarized about it, even in my own opinions. But first, let's take a look at the top stories of the week. There are no top stories of the week. That's the spoiler. The top story of the week is self-indulgent, as this show often is. And that is, I bought an Oculus Rift. And I guess a little background on all that is I've been a long time hater i guess you could say on vr i don't think it's there i don't think the games are there they're just these dumb little experiences uh, it's too expensive was one of the big reasons but i'm very interested in vr i like new shiny things i like games there's fun to be had even if it's just a mini game fun weirdness okay i'm interested let's try it out right and it's four hundred dollars which is exactly the price it needs to be. $400 is now cheaper than if you wanted to get everything on the PS4 because you'd need the, the camera and the controllers. This is $400 camera controllers. I got Lucky's Tail. I got um, Robo Recall, which is supposed to be pretty cool, and a bunch of other free games. There's a ton of free games and experiences. Uh, yeah, that's the thing, is all these experiences that I've kind of done. I actually, I, I've only had it for maybe, what time is it? Four hours. I've had this thing and it took an hour to set up, which was partially my fault and partially because I was cooking in the middle of it. And I do think the experiences, I've said this even before I got it, the experiences are, is why I want it. I want to play something that's like, let's go to virtual Rome, right? And let's walk around. That's exactly what I want this to be. And I haven't done anything like that quite yet. There is a Google Earth thing I want to check out that I've heard good things about. I downloaded it. I downloaded a ton of things, like 30, 40 gigs of just games and nonsense. And I, I'm very excited to get into it because a little further background on it. I bought this thing on Monday, Monday night, and it was backordered because it was it was so successful, so popular. People are all excited about it. And then I had to wait. And I kept waiting, and I kept waiting. And last night, I had a dream about it. I had a dream about VR, about playing a VR game. And I'm not even that excited. As I said, I'm, I'm a big doubter of it. And and it's just, well, I'll, I'll get to it. And, and, and it'll come to me. It's back-ordered five to seven days. It's been four days. But I'm having a dream about it. And it's just because I can't wait. Like, I want my new dumb toy... Even if I don't like it, I want it. I'm tired of waiting, right? So I canceled that and I went out to Best Buy because you can't get this. And on Amazon, it's like wait a week and they'll ship it to you. Anywhere, it's wait forever and they'll ship it to you eventually when they get some in. Actually, I, I had it ordered on Newegg uh, because there's no tax when I buy things on Newegg. And it was now out of stock when I went to cancel it which is how successful it was for them or how few they had, however way you want to look at it. So I went to Best Buy. You go to a freaking store and you can just pick it up off the shelf. I did that. And you know what? I've played maybe an hour of stuff in the Rift. I've played, there's a Spider-Man Homecoming VR thing. I've played a... Uh, I was, I was scrolling, I went through everything in the store because I knew the store wasn't going to have thousands of things. So I went through everything in the store. Let's get another video going. Uh, and and there was a Ghost in the Shell VR experience, which uh, if you can imagine, is not that good. <laughs> but neither was the Spider-Man Homecoming uh, VR experience. You know, they're just like dumb little things, right? But that's what I did. And it was just to test the experience. I did that. And I did the little tutorial test things when you put the headset on and it says, here's some experiences, right? Just look around and have fun. And it's so stupid. It's so stupid because it's, it's like, oh, it's in front of me. There's this one where this dinosaur just runs up at you. It's on top of you. It roars in your face and it just leaves. 
And that's so stupid, right? That's the just like, okay, and your point is, who cares, right? It was really cool. Like, it was just so cool to be in there. It, ha it very much has that park fun. Look at this. It's even off that price. Crazy. Uh, this park fair fun ride to it, which I do very much enjoy. I love theme parks and, and roller coasters and all that. So I'm down. I'm down with that angle. And that was cool. Going into and doing, when I set up the touch controllers, which I don't... No, they're too far away. Uh, I set up the touch controllers, and there's this thing... Oh, it was so cool. Uh, where this like little Rob the Robot was giving you cassette tapes, and you're taking, you're reaching into the physical space, taking the cassette tape, like grabbing it with your hand, almost literally with the, via the buttons, and you're pushing it into this computer, and then the computer... 3D renders, it's like a fake 3D, uh, 3D printing, sorry. It's a fake 3D printing of this rocket. A bunch of rockets appear on there. And you grab one of the rockets, and I'm looking at it in my hand, and there's a tag on it, and I just go, huh? Whoop! And you, I pull on the tag instinctively. But that's what you're supposed to do. You pull on the tag, a jet launches out of the back of the rocket, I aim it, and shoot it across the room. It bounces off some walls, and then starts coming back towards me. And I, again, instinctively just go, whoop, to grab it. And I grab it out of the fucking air. It's so cool. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. But it really, it's exactly what everyone says. You have to experience it. Because even dumb nonsense like that is a ton of fun. And this game is the one I'm going to be playing right after stream. I stream this. This is what I want to play. This is Robo Recall. You're just running around killing a bunch of robots, shooting guns at them. That's my kind of thing. I'm down to play that. I can't wait to play Lucky's Tale. I can't wait to play, I'm sure Resident Evil 7 It was going to get official VR support for the PC eventually. I cannot wait to play that. Uh, Will, my mod, if he ever shows his face again, uh, there's uh, Emily wants to play in VR. <laughs> I don't know if I'll do it, but if Will sees this, I'll do it. That's your challenge, Will. Find this video in all my thousands of videos. But, and I've only had it, like I said, for several hours. But I really enjoyed it so far. I've had no nausea, maybe a minor headache, but I think that might just be because I was using it with my glasses and that is not comfortable. And maybe it is comfortable if I do it differently, but as the way I was doing it was not comfortable at all. Uh, that's that's a gripe against it. I think it still is a little blurry. I don't know if I don't have if I have everything set up exactly right. I think there's nothing else for me to really fiddle with, but it's a little. It's not blurry like oh this is blurry, but but blurry in the sense of like it just needs that that one click. Like when you're in the doctor's office, a one or two. That's all it needs. It needs that one click over. Um, and maybe that's just like the games in VR can't be super high res anyway. Uh, we'll see. This will be the, the test game because it's definitely very pretty. I like it so far. And next week is going to be the VR week. That's it's going to be the VR showdown, rundown, chow down. I, I, I'm pretty... I'm not... See, my expectations were very minimum. Minimal, right? So I wasn't going to go crazy. Uh, is this your only VR experience you had before because I have the Samsung VR and it gets me pretty dizzy? Uh, yeah, I did Google Cardboard. I've done that. And uh, that doesn't give me any problems either. I, I'm, I think, and I knew this going in, I'm very not uh, like susceptible to stuff like that. I've been on boats a couple times and I had no problems. Like I'm, I have a really strong stomach in that in that respect. I love roller coasters. I love that kind of thrill ride. Weird. But there was a couple moments in the Ghost in the Shell thing where stuff was like running at you and it gets you that feeling of like, whoa, this is weird. But I haven't done anything too intense yet, so I don't know. But I didn't get dizzy. Like I said, I just had a, a minor, like a very minor wibbly headache from it and i think that was just because i had my glasses shoved in my face um because that was very uncomfortable other than that no i've had no problems at all uh, it's been really really good the motion tracking is is fabulous 
it is way better than the Wii. It is not a, a chintzy garbage motion. Like the, it really tracks all the things. It tracks if your fingers are over certain things, so you can like do thumbs up and point and like close and open your hands and things. That's really cool. It's not tracking your fingers. It's just it's it's fancy science. It's basically it knows if you're almost touching the button and if you're not. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll have to update you, Delphox, later on if it's if there's any other issues when actually playing a game longer than 15 minutes. I think the longest I've had it on is 15, 20 minutes, maybe, maybe 30 minutes. Um, like I said, I, I was using it with my glasses and that was painful. So I have my contacts in now and I'm going to play more <laughs> to see if that works better. Oh, also, there's like some fogging action going on and I need to kind of like seal the nose hole. Because the fogging action, it's got to stop. It is not, no, not good. No more fogging. No. Moving things over. Boop, 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 boop. But if that got you dizzy, I, I can't imagine this is any better. I'm not too familiar with the difference between Sam's. Oh, that's your phone. The fog. Yeah, the fog gets pretty annoying. I think it. I think it was just it's so tight, which is what you want. And if like any air gets in there, I don't know. I have to test with that. I think I'm just gonna get like toilet paper and shove it around my nose, <laughs> and be like, no air, go in here. Yeah. It's very scientific. Let's. Hey, your comments here too. Let's go and talk about Dead Cells. Delphox, you actually saw me stream Delphox, uh, Delphox, Dead Cells the other day. That's a circular sentence. And I, I really like this game. It's an early access. It's a Metroidvania leaning more to the Castlevania side of that. And it's procedurally, procedurally generated, which is, the, I think, one of the biggest problems with it. For me, that's, that's a very personal thing. Oh, this is me trying a platforming challenge and failing. Haha. <laughs> and... So, it's a roguelike very similar to Rogue Legacy in that you will die and you will unlock some things based on your progress to use in the next run, uh, whether this be 5-10% to 10 damage boost for swords or an extra health container thingy or um, other various items, the amount of gold you get to keep when you die. Every, you lose everything, but you keep those boosts that you earn by killing enemies and getting their dead cells to use to power up this thing, etc., etc. Between each floor of this dungeon, there's a room where you get to equip, or upgrade, sorry, different things, and that's where you get to use that. So it's a risk-reward of, do I get through this room quick enough to, like, do I risk going over here to collect more cells, or do I leave to go and power things up because I can't power things up in the middle of a, a run or a floor or whatever. And, and that's all well and good. That's the familiar hook you're probably aware of with Rogue Legacy or any Rogue Likes or games of this ilk. There's also a few abilities you get which so far have been finding uh, objects in the world and one ability allows you to turn them into vines you can climb on. And the other ability is these little sarcophagi that when you activate, you teleport somewhere else. So those are the abilities you unlock, and you unlock those permanently by defeating a little sub-boss elite enemy. And, and I like that. I like that aspect of it. I like all the enemies. I like the combat. It's very fast. There's a dodge move. There's a double jump. All these different weapons you get, whether it be swords or bows or lightning from your hand, that's pretty cool. They can have other little effects where there's arrows shooting out when you do it. There's secrets like I just found a secret. There are other things such as little um, abilities, which I like a lot of the bomb abilities. There's a, a frozen bomb. There's grenades. There's um, a bear traps, various different things. And you can only have two at a time on the left and right triggers. So you're using them in tandem with your other abilities to like, okay, this does more damage when the enemy's on fire. So I'm going to throw the grenade, set them on fire, and then th do this other thing. Or I had 
Uh, and they do, they do crazy effects too sometimes where I had this weapon that when it killed people, they would blow up and their body, like detritus, whatever, uh, their giblets would also blow up and hit enemies. So like enemies would get caught in their own little just explosion of their dead friends. And I thought that was a really cool thing. It's got that going for it. It's got the, the loot of a Diablo going for it where there's all these numbers and you do I want this status effect or this other status effect and, and that's really cool I like that quite a bit but and this is still an early access game and I've only played uh, like five and a half hours of it it just starts to kind of fall apart for me when everything's so damn random and the upgrades you get are so inconsequential and it feels like I'm climbing a mountain when what I would want from a game like this is a much quicker experience and not even that much quicker. I just mean, I want to see some progress, but I'll play this game for half an hour and I'll have upgraded one thing and it, it's just like, I'm getting nowhere. And as fun as it is, it's it's not fun to have to go through the same worlds over and over again, uh, even if they are different layouts, uh, because you'll also get different weapons. And like, well, this time I didn't get any good weapons. So I died over here because I just, you know, the random number generator didn't give it to me. This time, the first area gave me three or four level ups for my HP, so I was a stupid tank. And this other time, it gave me one for strength, and that was it. You know, it's too random heavy for me in terms of, of that and in terms of the uh, abilities you get, what type of bombs. I've gone through this game, I've played runs for the first 15 minutes, and I will not have any abilities. These I'm looking at on the screen right here, I'll have none. And that's crazy and it's just not fun uh and i know that's the randomness of it and you're supposed to keep playing but it's like i'd rather this game be 10 hours and i i'm just building this crazy character and then it's over and i'd also this is coming fresh off of hollow knight which i loved which is a metroidvania which is not procedurally generated which is very much carefully laid out world and all that the procedurally generated stuff is cool and it's awesome that it never ends but it is nowhere near the lovingly crafted whatever that you'll get from any other metroidvania game and that's the problem with it to me it just ne it's never going to reach that it's never going to get to be what that is and and that's a that's just a fact like these random rooms are cool and all but like there's there's something to the uncharted we made this set piece because it's epic. Here's every moment to the letter. This is exactly what we want the player to experience. Here you go. There's something to that. It, it's it's very different from the open world. Oh, I threw a, a bomb and it flipped this bus and the bus went off the rails over here and it, it killed this pedestrian who like pushed their friend into the car. Like, it, it, like these crazy sandboxy moments, these water cooler moments that can only happen because they're in a sandbox, because it's so random. They're, they're cool too, but at a certain point, I want I want the game to be crafted, and that's just a, a more personal thing for how I play games. I want something a little more crafted, which is why stuff like this, the boss fight, is really cool, because this is a, a moment that's defined. This boss has defined moves. Well, all the characters have defined moves, but defined area, you just have to deal with his attacks. I'm, I'm down with that, as opposed to the other ones where it's just like random shit can happen, this guy's randomly here, the room bends this way and now it's super easy, or this is super difficult for no reason because the randomness got here. Like, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm stuck up on that. And that's not even necessarily the biggest problem. It is, the biggest problem to me is all the, the weapons you can get that aren't guaranteed. If the upgrades you were upgrading were permanent, even if they were tiny, even if it was, hey, you get 10 more HP, and it takes 50 dead cells to have 10 permanent HP. I would love that. I would love, this is the upgrade system thing here. I would love that much more if I was upgrading my stats that way, even if they were tiny. And if you got stats throughout the game as normal that were better, fine. But that those base stats are always so terrible and I don't feel like I'm upgrading things enough I still think the game's really good, and it, some people love this game. I'm not great at it. It's also maybe the other problem. Like, you're going to see me die here in a second. 
uh, or almost die here in a second because it's just I'm dumb. It's right here. And I think it's worth it. I think I got it on sale for like 15 bucks. It is early access. They are adding a bunch of things. But again, they added a bunch of things I'll likely never see. Like this is the furthest I've gotten when I happen to be recording this. Uh, and I don't know if I ever, like, I don't know if I want to do it again because it's just kind of a pain in the ass to have to do everything over and over again. And, and this is coming from someone, me, who I keep bringing this up. It comes up often. Got the Platinum and Bloodborne. I love all the Souls games. Like, I don't mind doing things over and over when it's five minutes. Not when it's 25, 30 minutes over and over. That's what bothers me. The fact that I beat the first boss and now I can't just start after the first boss with maybe, like, or maybe the level right before it. I have to get through two levels and then fight the boss again and then get further from where I was. It's just too much of a hassle to me. And and I mean, I think that just comes down to, I have a lot of other things to play. Like I got my stupid new Oculus I don't need. I, I got all this stuff I can play. I would rather be playing those experiences than, than really dealing with any of this nonsense. Uh, and it's fun and cool. Here's where I die. Because like three things hit me in the face. It's, I'm like, I don't even know. I'm just real bad. Like, it, it just doesn't have the difficulty. It just ramps up way too quickly and my abilities suck or either really good, right? The randomness will give me crazy awesome items or I'll get trash and the run's just over. And I hear people on the internet well, okay, one person. I saw one quote, and that's my... Oh, it's on the Steam page. That's where I saw it. And it says, oh, these runs take, you know, 10 to 15 minutes. And I'm like, this video that I, I, that I cut this part out of is 45 minutes almost. And it's just, it's just too long of a run. The Binding of Isaac... That, see, I played that when it came out, and I forgot about it, and I've never played Afterbirth or Rebirth or whatever. Um, it is very much like that. That's exactly it, actually. That's that's a very good example. It is very Binding of Isaac. You're not guaranteed to get the, all the tiers you want or the weird little things or the map warps around the wrong way. Yeah, it is very much like the Binding of Isaac. If you love the Binding of Isaac, you probably like this more than I did because I played the Binding of Isaac for like f about probably the same, 10 hours maybe. And I was like, that's cool. It's not. It's not for me. It's, it's, I, I see it and I appreciate it for everything it is. Same with Dead Cells. I, I see the genius here. It just doesn't click with me. And it, and it's, you know, because of those reasons, it's just too, I want that crafted. Give me a little more of this crafted experience. Look, my little, all my nonsense is up. Than what this offers, you know, it's just, it's, it's fine. It's not bad. It certainly isn't bad. By no means is it bad. But it, it, yeah, I can I forgot, I completely forgot about that. Binding Magic is the perfect example. But it's, 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 I don't know. I don't want to tell people not to play it. Not that I have any power or anything, but I, because it's good. It's not a bad game. It's just, there's like some caveats involved of, and it starts so slow. Like, that's the thing too. This first level, it's so deceptive. Things will randomly start doing a third of your health bar and you're like well the last level they barely did anything it just doesn't quite have the the difficulty curve that i would expect or that i'd i'd want and i like these kind of hardcore fighting side scrolly games it just when you're using the same sword for 30 minutes because you haven't found anything that sucks you know that that really sucks you're at a big disadvantage not because of your skill level but because of a computer picked a random number and you lost right like that's that's the problem to me merry christmas and any more questions <laughs> class i like the art too i didn't mention the art the art's really good it almost you you could look at this game and say like it looks done it really looks pretty close to done um there's been a, i've had a few weird little glitches with it but nothing uh game breaking i've heard some people had crashes but i haven't had any problems but i never seem to have any problems when people are like oh this crashed all the time near a time it doesn't work on pc and i'm like it worked fine for me i played it for 30 hours mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what else can you do oh you can equip this like collar thing which is some super ability 
You can get one that revives you if you die only once. You can get a bunch of other things. Like I had one that when I took damage, enemies around me would take damage uh, equivalent to that. That was cool. There's like there's a lot of really cool ideas here. I just shorten the experience down to where a run doesn't take 45 minutes and I accomplish very little. That's my that's my deal. Also, Merry Christmas. Also, you can break those doors down and if, without paying the money. And if you break the doors down, you <laughs> you get cursed. And if you take any damage, you'll die. But if you kill ten enemies, the curse is lifted. So there's, there's some really there's some really cool ideas here. That's the heart that can revive you. Really cool ideas. I just think it's not for me. The bosses and enemy. I like all the bosses and the enemies. Um. Yeah, I have no complaints there. It's a very, very solid work there. Um, really good enemies, a nice mix of of strategy. Like you see this, like that guy, you know he's a, a ranged guy. And that other one, the green ones are the melee guys. So you, there's like interesting crowd control you have to do and knowing what that enemy can do. This enemy, when you kill him, he releases these exploding uh, spores. So you have to leave the area. There's some really smart ideas there and as you keep going through the floors more and more enemies start appearing and they did a really good job it's not like it starts it's not tales of symphonia where two hours in it starts recycling sprites it's not like that they have some really uh cool ideas and they mix it up very well that's one of the sarcophagi they do a good job there the bot the one boss i thought was good the elite enemies too are way tougher than that boss. Like they just, they'll teleport, they're summoning minions, out of control. Out of control. No more question, why is this so hot? What the fuck was that? That's, that's how I end the segments now. Because we gotta get into The Last Guardian. It's gotta happen. How do you spell guardian? <laughs> it's, I, I think I've spelled guardian correctly every other time. And thanks for hanging out, Del Fox, as always. You'll get to see me play some of the beginning of the game here, too. Oh, it's actually right where the stream ended. That's funny. Where'd the button go? Oh, here it is. The Last Guardian is a game that I played. Um, so I, I never finished Eco. I only played it on the re-release they did. I never finished it. It's got some annoying problems, but I appreciate it. And I, I only really played it because I love to death Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, very excited for the remaster, me, remake, whatever. Um, totally will play that again. That's, that's awesome. I think I have, well, that's somewhere. I think I have the, the copy of the game, like right here, uh, is, is what I'm saying. I only have games I like behind me. I think that's true. Yeah. Anyway. So I like those games. I got to play the last guardian. It's got such a storied history of this bizarro world. We showed it in 2007 and then we left. It's got that going for it. Um, it also had a lot of weird press and complaints and, and and all that. So let's get the good out of the way with The Last Guardian. Uh, there are moments in The Last Guardian that are spectacular, that are really something you can only experience in a game like this, in a game that um, lets you blow up pots with a dog. In a game where you become friends with a virtual pet, in, in a way that sounds stupid, but you really do, and you start to respect this animal, and you start to understand how to order it around, and for it to listen to you, and it does behave like an animal. And I, for the most part, 
didn't have too many problems with ordering it around or getting it to do things. There is a learning curve. It does. There is a moment in the game where it starts to obey you more, in quotes, uh, which is intentional. And it's earned. Like, everything is earned in that respect. And, and I think that's fine. Um, so there are these fantastic moments where Trico will catch you or where you're just riding on top of him, jumping on these pillars to pillar to pillar that, that are spectacular. There's a uh, reveal at the end that I loved. I need to, I need to clip that out, actually, because I was streaming it. I need to clip out my reaction to that because it was so cool and it really took me by surprise. It's not a, yeah, a Bruce Willis was dead the whole time type of reveal, but it is a reveal of something that, that kind of it hits you and you're like, oh, oh, I did not. Okay. Like, oh, that's a little bit of a bummer. <laughs> like, oh, I didn't, didn't see that. And, and then that, I, I hate to say it, but that was almost worth it. Um, that and all the other amazing moments along the way. And I was thinking about this review earlier in the day and, and I came up, uh, upon this, this like phrase, which is basically, what are all these shitty moments doing in this fantastic game? Because there is a fantastic game in here. There really is. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's there, you know, it's right there and it's hidden away behind so many uh, either bad decisions or they ran out of time or whatever. Really, it's irrelevant that we're just going to call them bad decisions because no one's patching this game. It's out. It's done for all intents and purposes. So they're bad decisions. Um, and and one of them is how Trico does react to things. Sometimes it's it just it just works, right? And you're like, yeah, jump. And he, he jumps and you're like, yeah. And then sometimes you're like, come down. Why aren't you just come down? And, and he won't do it. And then you realize, oh, I was in the way. And for some reason I had to just move out of the way a little bit. And then he jumps down. So it's like, but, but why couldn't you have just worked this out a little bit? So there's some funniness there there's a lot of funniness with uh, the game not giving you any clues which I think is fine except that th some things are so vague that it's hard to figure out what to do in particular there's one moment and this was again on on my stream where you're supposed to go right and I went left and for some reason the game lets you go left and it lets you like it lets you go left, jump through a hole in the ceiling, along this castle wall, along this other garden. And then you think about it and you go, wait, this is the wrong way. Because he's he's not obeying me. He's clearly not going any further. Why did the game let me go that way? Why? Why? And there's so many moments like that. There's, there's one area where there's a chain. And... I understand why the chain is there now because you circle back to that place much later. But when you first go there and you don't know what to do and you're climbing this chain for 20 minutes, I could have used literally anything, even if it's just Trico pawing at stuff, which he does do sometimes. I could have used a minor hint, not a huge hint, a minor hint. That's all. That's all I'd want. I'm not going to get it. And there were uh, particularly one spot at the very end, the final boss, if you want to call it that, uh, where I would not have figured out what to do if I had not looked it up. I would have never really figured that out. I never would have tried that, never would have done that. There's also some super annoying things that happen. I want to say constantly, but it, that's, that's not true. Uh, it's just... Like here, you're throwing these barrels to like draw him into the water because he's scared of the water. That's cool animal shit. So why is half this game filled with nonsense? That's that's my thing. Why is half this game just not fun or good and the other half of it great? And there's some game, I forget what game it was, but there was a game I, I described this way before where... I had never been so like bipolar about it where I hated moments, hated it. And then I really liked this part. And that's the last guardian for me. Uh, there's this awesome moment where you're fighting this creature and 
this whole scenario is just like super epic, you know, on an, on an uncharted kind of single player, um, very controlled event way. And, and that was awesome. I loved that moment. And it's followed by something that's confusing, doesn't make any sense. It's got the problem where if you screw up something, you might think that's the wrong way or the wrong uh, thing you're doing. But in reality, it's the right way. You just did it wrong. But there's no way to know that, right? Because it just demanded so much, not necessarily accuracy, but I guess accuracy because you're dealing with this terrible camera. It demanded so much accuracy you didn't think it was right, but it actually was right. It's a whole thing. I've mentioned the camera. This camera has to be one of the worst video game cameras I've ever experienced. In part because it is good sometimes. And it starts showing you things and, ooh, look at Trico jump. Look at Trico jump this way. Ooh, pretty Trico. That's cool, right? And then it's in a wall. It's, I've had moments where it was inside Trico and I'm seeing the inverse of his eyes flickering around. I'm like, this is just broken. <laughs> like, you guys, this is just bad. Why did you put all these tiny caverns if your camera can't do it? There was, if you just leave the, the, the control stick, like put the controller down, the camera will try to follow Trico, but it's like a lazy drunk where it's like this. And you're like, what are you doing? You'll, you'll move the control stick to the right or something, and it will kind of move and then it's weirdly floating. It just doesn't work very well. And there are many moments where if it had just done a static camera angle, like put the camera up here, I'm on his back just climbing up a whatever. Let me just watch that and let me look at the beauty of this scene. But it doesn't. It doesn't do that. It shits all over itself with its terrible camera. And it also does this super annoying thing where when the camera gets cut off, it doesn't like force inward or, or do anything weird. It fades to black for like half a second and then reappears where it should be, which is just so obnoxious when you're playing the game and when you're underwater or something, you can't see and you're trying to flip around and it's just, it's just a, n a nonsense. It's just nonsense. The camera in this game is so bad, so, so bad. And it, ugh, that magnified by puzzles being super obtuse and not even, I wouldn't even qualify them as puzzles. Like, I'm just trying to figure out how to jump over here, which is the other thing. You're trying to jump on these chains and the camera will like be, it's wigging out, right? And so you're, I'm trying to jump and I need to just jump, right? And I'm like, whoosh, and then I die. And you know what happens when I die? I have to redo this section. And it's it's fine, right? Whatever. It takes five minutes to... It takes five minutes. Well, it's just five minutes, Ben. Yeah, it's just five minutes. That's three jumps. <laughs> like, I'm talking about three, four jumps in five minutes. Because everything in this game is so slow. He climbs slow. He jumps slow. He looks around slow. Trico look, looks around and jumps slow. Um, this is how Trico jumps. So, so he's on a platform, right? This is a little Trico. This is a little, uh, his little Trico wing, right? Okay. So he's, he's going to jump. You tell him to jump. You can do that. And he usually obeys that pretty well. You can tell him to jump. I tell him to jump. Okay. I tell him to jump. He goes like this. All right. He's thinking. And then he jumps. Now, I don't think I really exaggerated that very much. It takes a long time. And th th this game isn't short. It it's under 15 hours, my playtime. I only know that because I got a trophy for that. I don't know how long it was. It was over 10 hours and under 15. I don't know what that means. Probably 13, 14, because I was surprised I got the 15 one. And I think a good three hours of this game could get cut. Whether that is stupid, annoying parts of it that don't need to be there, don't need to be as long as they are. And I'm not even talking about like, I have to make 10 jumps, just make it eight jumps. No, 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 no. 
I'm talking about Trico, if he just jumped more quickly, the game would be an hour or an hour and a half shorter. If he just jumped more quickly or reacted to you more quickly or went to where he needed to be more quickly or was a participant in what you were doing for most of the game instead of being like at the end when he's a participant the entire time would have been nice uh it's just so it's weird to say i think the game could have used another six months in development to really iron out these issues because there's a lot of them there's a lot of pacing problems with that it's just not right it just it just isn't right especially when this game is really cool and i i did enjoy it you know i did play it all the way through um it had moments that were just incredibly frustrating to no end they they were bad they were just real bad and then it has these really really cool moments and they're simple they're simple moments of just walking around and having this animal and you get that attachment like the iron giant kind of attachment to this creature and and that's something you don't get in games or get in anything and it has some of these platforming sections are actually really good it, it's it's just crazy how they screw it up so much and some of these things like just making better checkpoints would not have been that hard to do 100 percent. you could have just made more checkpoints the guy uh, I'm surprised I haven't mentioned this yet. He he controls like a weird wet rag. He flops around like a weird wet rag doll. It's not quite right. This is a prime example of a better camera angle because Trico is going to start jumping along those pillars, but I missed half of it because I wasn't looking the correct way. And the game could have just fucking controlled the camera for me and made an awesome thing. But instead, I'm like, why that rock fall? I don't really get it. And then there's there's Trico over there in the distance. You could you couldn't see him. You couldn't see him. I'm going to turn back in a second. You'll be able to see him. It's it's just it's ridiculous. Why well, I'm standing here going like what's happening? Is he coming? I don't know. Is he? Maybe. I'm going to yell at him a couple times. And then I'm going to look at this wall and oh, the stupid kid starts running in place all the time. It's infuriating. And look, he's there. Well, I didn't freaking see him. He's like, it's like turning around and there's a cat there. You know, look, what's the cat doing there? That's basically Trico the entire time. And that's fine. I mean, whatever. But I don't know. Is this a recommendation? I did like it. I do think it's worth playing. I mean, full disclosure, I bought the game for $23. And I actually just sold it today for $14. So I paid $8. It's worth $8. If you can somehow find this in a red box and pay $3 a night and beat it in two or three days, that's worth it. That's 100% worth it. The game is not worth really... It feels like you're playing a beta. It feels unfinished. And that's that's so unfortunate because when it works, it works so well. It's so much fun to just see. Some of the puzzles are really cool. A lot of the just environments you go to are very interesting. It's, the execution is just not right, just not there. It does feel old. It does feel like a PS2 game. Um, I guess a PS3 game, but we're pushing it. We're pushing it on a PS3 game because, no, I think it still feels older than that. It looks really good overall, especially Trico, but it's just it's just not right. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if this is a recommendation. I don't think it is. I think if you looked up the surprising conclusion, it's not going to have the weight. And like None of the cutscenes and stuff are going to have the weight they would if you played it or the friendship you get with this animal. They're not going to happen just by reading a description of like, you make friends with animal. That, that stuff is cool. And, and especially if you're a pet person, you should play this game. You're really going to get something out of it. You're going to get that love and attachment to an animal. And it does feel for the most part, like a real animal. Except for the fact that a real animal would not be so finicky with food. This thing looks at the barrels of food and just kind of like... stares at it for a while. Like, eat it. And then it pecks at them and it'll like miss them. And it's just infuriating. Does it not have a tongue? They could have fixed this entire thing 
just by giving him a tongue or giving him some kind of inhale. You don't even need to animate that. It just goes into his mouth. He opens his mouth up over it and into his mouth. That's it. But but no, he, he pecks at it. It bounces the barrel all around. I don't know. It's a mess. It's a, it's a beautiful mess. It also uh, several times will stop and be like, I guess Trico's hungry. And it's like, man, I understand this isn't necessarily padding, but it feels like padding, man. Some, again, it goes back to it. This could have been an eight-hour game that was instead a 12, 13-hour game. And it's those hours I would have cut and it would have been spectacular, even with a lot of these complaints. It would have been spectacular, because a lot of the stuff I'd cut would have been the bad stuff, obviously. Uh, and I feel like a lot of the things that I, I'm complaining about are common complaints. I don't want to harp on the animal stuff. I, I think that is kind of the point. Him not behaving 100% uh, of the time is part of the point of the game, and really is the least of the problems with this game. <laughs> Uh, to tell you the truth, it, it's kind of not, it's almost a non-issue. Everything else is so much more egregious, whether it's the weird platforming or the bad camera or not knowing what to do in any way and the game going out of its way to just not help you. Uh, that's just peachy clean, stupid game. Peachy clean. Uh, yeah. I think that's it. I think that's all for The Last Guardian. Um, it's a game. With the, with the cat dog, it's... I think that is the biggest problem. Everything on cat dog is just a little slow. And like right there, he just jumped up. I missed it because of the camera. Just show me what you want to show me. You think this is so cool, Last Guardian? Then show me it. Because you're going out of your way just to not let me see stuff that's cool whatever whatever all right i do this show every friday at 3 p.m pacific time twitch.tv slash the game fanatics uh, i'll wait for a second to see if there's any uh comments about the last guardian but i think this week on my own channel i'm streaming oh splatoon 2 and then if i get everything set up maybe some oculus stuff on monday and wednesday um, but I have to see if I can get that set up. There's just a couple things I have to test because it outputs the sound into the headset and there's like a whole, it's a whole thing. Um, but I think I can get that to work. Maybe at least for Wednesday, maybe not Monday. Monday might just be Mario Maker, but definitely excited to do some rifty stuff. Do you regret your experience with The Last Guardian? No, I'm glad I played it. No, I'm, I'm definitely glad I played it. Uh, 100%. It was all worth it in the end that for the great moments along the way, it was definitely worth it. 100% worth it. Um, I would not have been happy if this was a $60 game I bought. I, I would not have said it was worth my experience. I would have been like, I, I'm going to throw this game away. Uh, if it was $40, again, no. I bought it for $22, like I said, and I would have been fine with paying $22 for this. $25, even 30 is getting up there. Uh, it depends on a, you know, on a personal level. Some people are going to like it more, but I'd not. And if you like it less, you're not going to like it for 30. But for what I paid for it, it was definitely worth it. I'm glad I played it. It was a good experience all around. Well, no, that's not true. Not all around. Somewhat of a round. A little bit of a round. Like, like an inverse, not an inverse Pac-Man, because I liked it more than that cutout slice, but but like, like that. That's why I said, why are there so many shitty moments in this great game? That is The Last Guardian. To a T, that is The Last Guardian. In a way that, and I felt the same way about Eco. And Eco, I quit. Not because, I, it wasn't like a section that I hated that I quit. It was just, I got to a point, I'm like, nah, I don't really need to do this anymore. Um, but Shadow of the Classes, I loved. And I beat that game. So like, this kind of style and weirdness, this milieu or whatever uh, i like it's just this needed more time in the oven this is not done this is a mess the controls are weird not even because of the buttons just it's like it feels like the original prince of persia from 19 
91 or whenever where the animations are so exaggerated and he's he jumps all weird they're they're it's a, it's a freaking mess sometimes but i liked it i think i think i liked it i don't know maybe i'm just lying to myself oh here you go let's see if i can land this jump it was close but it shouldn't be close that's my argument that shouldn't be a difficult jump to make that should be one i make 100 percent of the time and not have to worry about it. But every single two foot forward jump straight ahead might not be right in this game. And that's just stupid. Just stupid. All right. Thanks for hanging out, Del Fox. Well, I'll wait a second and see if there's any other comment. But that's the show. Here's the last guy. Look at him walk around. He's got his little shield. Which you It's funny. You get the shield at the very beginning. And they take it away. I forget how it gets taken away. I think it's coming up, though. I don't remember. I don't remember how it gets taken away. And then they give it back to you, and I forget how to use it. And, like, every single puzzle... I mean, I get... That's on me. I should have remembered that I just got a new item, but... I mean, come on. I'll righty then you. Mr. Welp. I just started clicking buttons. What does this do? Oh, that's my old text. Look, I have spoilers. All right. Thanks for hanging out. Merry Christmas. See you next time.